in to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV, over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello and welcome to an all new The Ultimate Fighter, a champion will be crowned on After Buzz TV. My name is Daria Baronado and I'm here with my boys tonight, Mr. George Hermosa and Mr. Jay Can. Hi guys. Hey lady. What's up? What up? Oh, it's Thug George tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like Thug Rose. Thug Life, yeah. But Thug George. <laughs> what up? There you go, George. I think she still I... does it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Even when she's not doing it, Even she when does she's it not trying to better be than thug. You. Yeah. yeah. Some people just comes naturally, dude. He's gonna go with it. Let's let him roll with it the whole episode. Let's see how long it lasts. You're from the valley, bro. Yeah, I can't. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you just got called out. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, guys. So I'm from last the week, <laughs> you, you're, you you confirmed you're from the valley. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Van Nuys. Van Nuys. Guys, if you want to find South George Hermosa. Nice, no Guys, ladies. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> ladies, if you want to find George Hermosa, he's in the south part of Van Nuys. How's that? That's right. Did I sell you well? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you can say. No, it's actually, it's more in the, uh, the north part of Van Nuys. I'm right on that border so of Panorama claims. City. So look all over Van Nuys. You'll find him. Anyway, last week on The Ultimate Fighter, a champion will be crowned. Episode 10, we saw Jessica Penne defeat number five seed Ashley Daly. And we saw... Uh, Ashling. Ashling. I was listening to you guys. Obviously, I was uh, absent last week. And, and oh, welcome back. I know, back. that was the best show ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hits through the roof, let they, me tell you. They were. Um, it's because you weren't here. Yeah, okay. Driver, Don't be butt sore, Jay. Drive home the punchline there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you guys were saying Ashling. Or Ashley. And I Ashling, know. I think we've we've been going no, no, no. back I mean, and what forth was, throughout the whole. Because what it was, we were we were combining Ashling and Daily, so we were just saying Ashley. We were just combining the yeah, name. Yeah, we just made. A, of course, they we were. we made a hybrid yeah, name. Sure. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. combined the name. He, he's never heard of hybrid names. Look at Benifer. It's... Jay, you're so. Behind <laughs> you go look at Benifer. Look at Brangelina. We were, you we were look doing, at Brangelina. We were doing the same thing. <laughs> Ashling and Daily. Ashley. Ash the Bash is so much. No, better, uh, no. To to make it fair. I have heard them say Ashley. Ashling. 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 Okay. Anyway, all right. Anyway. Nitpicking. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say it how I want to say it. Anyway, last week we watched her get defeated, was my point. And uh, this week we saw two really exciting matches. One that's been mm -hmm. super highly anticipated, Carla Esparza versus Tisha Torres. And, of course, Rose Namajunas versus JoJo Calderwood. Yeah, uh, Carla and Tisha... Uh, Anticipated even from back gosh, in Invicta. Days. I was going to say at least a year in the making, in the matter right. of speaking. Um, Tisha, you were you were filling me in. Yeah, they showed a clip on the episode to kind of fill uh -huh. us in, but I also read it online this morning. Um, so when Carla Sparza was defending her title belt in Invicta one mm -hmm. time, uh, her opponent pulled out last minute due to a bacterial infection. Mm. So that left Carla in the stands watching her friend Felice Harris. Was last minute, and they yeah, couldn't, last couldn't minute, find a, uh, couldn't find her a, a, an opponent. Yeah. And um, it's hard. It's hard fighting uh, fighting opponents last minute, especially, especially for a title match. Women, yeah, women title match. Well, I think with a title match, anybody would would jump at the chance. What have you got to lose? That's but at true. the same time, that is true. Um, yeah, finding women last minute, as you know, is uh, tough. Very tough. Tough making. Um, so yeah, so she ended up in the stands watching, but it was ironically her friend Felice Herrig's uh, Invicta debut mm -hmm. against Tisha Torres. Where Tisha Torres defeated. That was slick, right? <laughs> that was really people really, on really iTunes slick. have no idea what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so Tisha Torres defeated Felice Herrig, and uh, when Tisha was accepting her win, Carla Esparza decided to step in the cage and announced that she wanted to fight Tisha Torres in the future, in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they were saying is it's very strange when you have a champion calling someone out. Usually, it's the top contender calling the champion out. Well, it's good. You know, there's there's no rules to this matchmaking stuff. Definitely uh, not. It's an art, not a science. And 
um, you know, props to Invicta for, uh, you know, for, for setting that up such that you, uh, you start to build a storyline there. Definitely. Uh, kind of unfortunate and ironic that it ends up elsewhere, but that, that does happen from time to time. Right. I, I know most times whenever that happens, it's usually the promotion kind of pushing for the fighter to get in the cage, but would you kind of find it disrespectful if you're having your victory your moment. speech and then somebody right. else comes in? It's a weird moment. Uh, I see it two ways. I see it as kind of like a compliment. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, the Invicta champ just stepped in the cage after she watched me fight, being just a contender in, in, in the league, yeah. and said, I want to fight you. That's awesome. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, dude, I just won. You're calling <laughs> me out right now. Really? You couldn't wait till tomorrow. But I see both ways. I think if it's anybody besides the champion, then there's a bit more of a gray area. But if Definitely. the champion comes out and says, you know what? I'm the one, I'm yeah. the champ, I am the top of the mountain, the pinnacle, and you're the one I've decided that need, that needs to be my challenger. You're the next one for me as the champion to pick off. That is quite a compliment. It you definitely know. is a compliment. It should be taken as such. Yeah. Um, and, and it does, obviously it, it sets the stage for, uh, for, for an interesting angle whenever that match happens and you know obviously it happened tonight yeah they said they they were going to have it in invicta and right before they could schedule it they got the call from the ultimate fighter mm -hmm. you know from the ufc saying there was going to be a straw weight division on the ultimate fighter yeah and i think they kind of said save that match for then so yeah. that's what ended up happening but the ufc and invicta have a great relationship now as invicta fights are now airing on fight pass for mm -hmm. 9.99 a month and so i think it was probably fine we got her to do it now <laughs> she's, I mean, she's acting one like of us. She's one acting. Of us. She's acting like she's paying the nine ninety nine a month. Oh, <laughs> well then, that's well, that's a whole nother story. That is a whole nother story. <laughs> my my login info is George Hermosa at yahoo dot com. And we can't even What's share. The password? We can't even share. A, <laughs> we can't even share a spoon. <laughs> We're gonna go there. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. It was the molten cupcake. It no one wants to hear this. It is Come on, guys. Alexis does. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Alexis in the booth Jay, over there. Jay I told guess. the waiter to give me, me and George, one spoon amongst the two of We're us. We're at so we Chili's. Could share. We're having a good production meeting, getting ready for the show as we traditionally do. And never. Ducky Root Beer over here decides to go with the molten lava. Was it the, the molten lava cake? Chocolate cake. Yeah, That's chocolate favorite. cake. And it was delicious. And yep, yes, and, and these two were hugging up in their own little. Uh, uh, corner of their own booth, and I got my own big okay, Godfather Jan, style booth. Dave, if I was there, I would have cuddled with you. I, I'm counting on that. Is there, right. is there an oh button? Mario Yamasaki over here. And so, <laughs> so oh, anyway, oh. I mentioned something. <laughs> 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 so I just told the waitress, yes, give him one spoon for them and one spoon for me. And then Daria's like, no, that's no, yeah. absolutely not. Actually, George my, got the highs. Actually, my response was, ew, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then my response was, why? What do you have? And, and then, then I said a couple things, and then you said a couple things, and we agreed that we would just share. And then I, Carla shot in for another low-leg takedown. And back and to baking. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth J. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let's get back to the matches. So first up, we had Tisha Torres versus Carla Esparza. This is probably the most obvious striker versus grappler match that we've had on this season thus far. And it's always interesting to see these kind of matchups because you wonder what sport's going to win. What's going to be the dominant, yeah. uh, the dominant point in the match, the wrestling or Tisha Torres' striking. Mm -hmm. As a matchmaker, do you like putting a striker versus a grappler or do you like kind of more even-teeled I definitely, fighters? personally, I, I think even keel. You know, I'd, I prefer two fighters that are uh, all around, you know, Based or you know well-rounded as we say, um, but striker versus grappler is uh, it's it's kind of the, the the quintessential thing that this whole sport was based on. Mm -hmm. Who wins between the boxer and the or the kickboxer and the wrestler jujitsu player? Um, but we're so past that now. The, the sport has evolved so much. And and to to be fair, both of them are great fighters all around. Uh, but Carla obviously has a very strong wrestling base, right. uh, high school and college, and, uh, and and Tisha with her striking as well. Um, y you know, we, we run into these, and it does uh, it does come down to who is going to impose control of the match where they want it to be, on the ground or on the feet, right. uh, over the other person. And in this case, it was very clear-cut. Carla, uh, you know, the, Carla won out with her wrestling. 
Mm -hmm. uh, takedown after takedown after takedown, and even more attempts at that. She was going for the low-level singles a lot, and uh, you know, just the ankle uh, picking. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get which you thought was rather annoying. Uh, as a fighter, and and no, to be honest, as a spectator as well. Um, as you I guys, thought was, I thought it was fine. The shots were great. They were, the, fun they to were watch. amazing shots. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't sloppy by any means. I mean, she's she's a high level wrestler, and mm -hmm. she's brilliant to watch. And she's a, and Tisha Torres was a high level striker. Exactly. So why would you try to not uh, take her out of her game? A absolutely. If I were Carla, I would have done the same thing over and over and over again. But which I she would, did. Which she did. <laughs> but yet you thought it was boring or I, annoying. No, I didn't say boring. I said annoying. Because I'm, uh, I from a fighter's my... perspective, you're saying. Well, yeah, let, well, you I'm said a just from a spectator as well. Well, yeah, it looked annoying. I don't like. I don't ever like watching a wrestler chase a striker around the cage. It's not the most entertaining fight. Just like Jay said, he would prefer a matchup that's even keeled. Same it just as depends. Me. It just depends. It depends if, let's say, you have a high-ranking striker, and then you have a low-ranked uh, wrestler. I think it just depends because then you would probably be, wow, look at that wrestler taking down that striker. But I think it'd be different if she was, or if that person was high ranked a uh, striker. Because then you would look at it as, like, wow, the, the, the 15th ranked wrestler is, you know, totally controlling the, the, the person striker, you know? Well, that's I just think it depends on the ranking. I think because Carla was. <laughs> I'm getting lot. flashbacks <laughs> of airplane right Did now. Did anybody follow that? No. Okay, okay, okay. okay, 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 okay. Striker, striker, striker. Let, let's Boom. start over. Let him explain. Go ahead. Let's start over. So I think it just depends on the rankings. I think you thought of maybe a little annoying because Carla's ranked so high. She she should at least be have more weapons. Maybe is that what it is? No, that's not what it is at all. I wa I watch UFC all the time and I see. The typical wrestler lay in, it, now it wasn't lay and pray because she couldn't lay and pray because Tisha's defense Tisha's was so defense aggressive. Was great, yeah. It was... So it wasn't lay and pray for that reason. Mm -hmm. Had Tisha laid, she would have laid. And, Carla would have sat there. Yeah, in I my mean, opinion. you look at somebody like Anderson Silva, She's... who is a high rank striker. Anytime he would go to up a wrestler, and if, if especially if they're consistently yeah, trying to take him I down, remember. I think it just depends on who. Who's ranked higher? If the striker is ranked higher, it's going to be look, looking at more impressively. Well, skill the, level, if, not ranking. It, no ranking. Just uh, it, we've who, also who talked in the past. The though, is. That, if yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to say if you're a low-ranking grappler or wrestler, it's going to look a lot more impressive when you're trying to take down a high-level striker. I just see based what you on, mean. Like, who what the underdog is, or what the difference is, or the spread. I see what you mean, but it has nothing to do with why I thought it was annoying. I thought it was annoying because I'm a striker, mm -hmm. and in my, specifically in my last fight, you guys were at it. The girl kept trying to clinch with me and take me down, and it was like I just wanted her to get the hell off me so mm -hmm. I could strike. Yeah, well, that comes down to game. that comes down to imposing strategy. The more that you impose your strategy, the less you got to worry about the other person exactly. imposing theirs, and, I, and the more that you can do what you want to do. And that's what. And to go back to you know talking about Tisha's striking, had she have had maybe come out more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And taking the floor first, because listen, she didn't pull off. She was really reticent on, on yeah. letting her hands and feet go. Listen, Carla is an amazing wrestler. Tisha is an amazing, amazing Muay Thai kickboxer. And had Carla had uh, Tisha come out and used her kicks and punches before Carla could, mm -hmm. you know, grind her down to the ground, it might have been a different fight. I'm not saying she would have won because I still, sure. I still see Carla catching a leg kick or. You know, catching a body kick and taking her down. Right. Uh, that's always the risk you take when, when you throw a lot of kicks with against a wrestler. Yeah. Out of ten matches, all ten of them are going to be very different. You know. Absolutely. That's, um, but to be fair, when when you're getting into the the se you're at the semifinals mm -hmm. and you're trying to rest a position at the finals at the dinner table right. for this belt that I think uh, Carla probably feels is hers to defend. She's probably, you know, this is a series of title defense of her because she never lost, uh, uh, lost the Invicta belt. title. Yeah, and right. came over as the number one seed. So, you know, playing to her strengths and doing what she does best, I understand it. Hey, kudos to her. I would have done the exact same thing. If yeah. I had world-class wrestling, why the hell would I stand and strike with Tisha Torres? It mm -hmm. makes no sense. And, and Tisha did not, you know... It, did not hit the un button, on button, it seems, uh, in that match, and that's her responsibility. Well, yeah. yeah. What happened was, I, like I said, I feel like there was that first 30 seconds, the three of us were watching it, and nothing happened. And we were like, I just felt like Tisha had a strike, mm -hmm. literally and, you know, metaphorically. Mm -hmm. She had a strike. She had to do it then. Yeah. Because if she waited too long, and once you're, you know, getting grinded out by such a good wrestler, mm -hmm. 
first of all, you can't get angles so your punches are effective. Right. So you're punching from like a, you know, an, you know you're punching, but it's she's, not a mm -hmm. knockout punch. It's not effective. She spent a lot of time defending, getting out of the takedown. Exactly. She did great it was, for it, but that doesn't win points. So f yeah, uh, k kudos to Tisha Torres. She defended the first three or four mm -hmm. takedowns that Carla shot at her. So yeah. kudos to her for that. That's yeah. not easy. We were saying we were sitting there watching. Oh, Carla would have taken <laughs> us down by now if that was on. <laughs> she would have taken my fat ass down, that's for sure. <laughs> she has great wrestling. No, but they both did amazing. They're both top contenders regardless of, of the finals Yeah. in the strawweight division. You know what strikes me funny was Carla won by majority decision, which means that some... George, put your phone away. You I was going to I was gonna pull up the uh, okay. the fighters, the fights that were announced for the tough finale. Okay. Oh, good idea. Go ahead and do that. <laughs> but but yeah, it's, funny, it's funny how it was a majority decision... <laughs> Which means that one of the judges picked the fight one to one. Yeah, uh, the the, the fight went two bizarre. rounds, and two of the three judges gave it to Car gave both rounds to Carla, which seemed pretty logical to me as well. She controlled the match, you know, yeah. more so uh, more so in pretty much in every way uh, compared to Tisha. And one judge apparently saw it one to one, um, which means you know a draw as opposed to giving the match to Tisha. Right. That would be a split decision. Maybe maybe one of the judges gave her uh, two to two rounds to none. Who knows? No, that would be a split decision then. No, Just but it was judges. still. No, but it was. It wouldn't have. Well, maybe because two judges would have given it to Carla. One yeah. judge would have given it to to Tisha. But at any rate, I I don't know how you see even. It, it had to have been the second match or the second round, and I don't know where exactly you really yeah, saw. Yeah, I mean, uh, the only thing I could say, and we've talked about this time and time again on this show and on the UFC show, is that when they see someone with such good defense and yeah. such good work from the defensive position, they give them a lot of credit for that. Mm -hmm. um, they, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with it either, but we've seen it. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen judges score things that way, and we've been like, wait, how do they? And our only answer is that, I guess they like the defense, but you know you gotta look. They at like it. the D. Um, oh God, people on iTunes. Are like, that's really <laughs> I'm getting the look from the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Judges like the D. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Alexis? I say nothing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for leaving me with the boys today. Um, anywho, so yeah, so the Carlos Garza moves on to the mm -hmm. semifinals. Yep, to fight one of her besties. Jessica yep. Penny. That's crazy. Yeah. Jessica Penny. It happens. We, we've talked about this as well. Fighting friends. It's going to happen. The thing she didn't want to have happen, happened. Very true. She didn't seem too bummed about it, though. What do you have to say, Alexis? No, I was just going to bring up the fact that, like, we ta we've been talking about this for episodes now. Mm -hmm. You have to get over that. Right. You're all gonna you're all gonna end up fighting. So I don't understand. Yeah. Like, right. I'm glad that she wasn't bummed out about it. But at the same time, I don't understand why she was like, oh, I don't want to do that. You're in a competition show. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> right. That's that's it. That's all. Yeah. It's very true. She even well said, Alexis. Very well said. Thanks, Judge. Follow her at A Torres eight twenty. <laughs> uh, you were close. It was uh, A Torres eight nine zero. Oh, eight nine zero. Okay. Once you follow these people, you don't have to remember this stuff. You know. Yep. Yep. Just follow them and have them forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, Tisha Torres. Oh my God, I totally lost my train of thought. We're on the Ultimate Fighter. Tisha Torres was not a friend of Carla's, and oh, therefore... Oh, right. But even Carla Esparza said about Tisha Torres, she's like, oh, well, she was on the same side of the bracket as me at the beginning of the show, so I didn't think I'd have to fight her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they... A different side no, of the no, bracket. On the opposite. Actually. She was completely on yeah. the opposite one. On the opposite side of the bracket. Yeah. And so they threw her for a loop. Right. The, the switcheroo happens. The whole comeback. Which I still think chance. that she should have not got a second chance. We're past that, George. <laughs> well, yeah. they, they mentioned <laughs> it. it. Carla, Carla no, brought right. it up. Carla brought it up on the show, and I was like, I don't like you, Carla. Because I'm still not over the, you know, but I agree with her as far as Tisha should not have gotten a second chance. Yeah, she should have. I mean, it's it happens. It's or happened just, in the past. Or, or, or just for the simple fact that she was ranked number three. Like, the, that's, no, not, the simple, that's not the reason. No, that's that was not the, the reason. reason. No, that's it's what Dana White said. But He's it's like, not well, Car the, oh, Tisha was ranked number it three. Was, it was the most competitive well, match. Well, that's what he said. Yes. But that's what he said. Even so, yeah, she's the highest ranked. Who else are you going to pick? If they would have picked... Someone Can't do an alternate. No, I'm saying you. Uh, she lost the number 14, so is she really the number three ranked? But it doesn't matter. If they would have picked the number, you know, 
I don't know who got kicked off and what their ranking is, but say the number 10 ranked, mm -hmm. they would have been like, why would they pick her instead of Tisha Torres? It makes no sense. They should have brought in. She, had, had she was the most competitive you of the women the who girl. lost. Especially because it was still the first round. I'd understand if it was like the quarter or the semi. Okay, but there were several matches. There were several weeks into it. She was the most competitive of the women that lost in the tournament at that point. Who do you so bring back? So it makes back? sense you bring. I would have had an alternate. But then you I also had have the number seventeenth ranked fighter, and then you seventeenth, <laughs> and then you also have somebody that uh, th that is training and in the house and doesn't even know if they're in the competition. I mean, some people might take that risk. Yeah, what have I got to lose? But at the same time, it does it. It's unfair. I mean, it's it makes just as much sense to bring her back. I think because especially because this is how the tournament has been done in the past. All right. Right. Um. And on top of that, she had to fight a second uh, preliminary round match, you know? Yeah. So it's... You, she you can't she it's... worked her way to the quarterfinals, which yeah. we just saw. Now she's out. So whatever. Fair or not, it worked out the way it would have originally. Or mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, Carla still advanced. Tisha didn't. Yeah. So it is what it is now. Uh, Carla has to face... God bless you, God bless Alexis. You. Carla has to face <laughs> Jessica Penne now in the semifinals, her friend. And so on to the next fight, Rose Namajunas versus Jojo Calderwood. Now, wasn't this fireworks? This was my favorite <laughs> fight to date on the Ultimate Fighter 20. Um, God, Rose is undoubtedly the best fighter in this division. Not on the show, not in the UFC, not in in, fact, in this division. You think she's better, better than, than Jessica Aguilar? Uh, oh, I better would... than Jessica Aguilar? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Well. well well, Jessica Aguilar's a shots total... fired. No, no, <laughs> Jessica Aguilar's a totally different kind Better of fighter. Better than Daria Baronado? <laughs> Not there yet. But Jessica Aguilar's just a totally different kind of fighter. If, if you've ever seen Jessica Aguilar fight, she's strong. She's a good competitor. Um, she's just in a different spot of her career. You, Rose Namajunas is 22 years old. She's hot. She's fresh off the press. She has a name for herself. She fights like someone who just doesn't care. She, she doesn't have anything Nothing to lose and she's on the upswing. And she's emotional when she fights. They mentioned that during the episode and it is true. She cried after her victory. Let's just say it. Uh, she won via... That doesn't make her a better fighter necessarily. But what? Maybe, it does maybe possibly make her a mentally More, healthier yeah. fighter. I'll well, no. That. I mean, she's an emotional fighter and a lot of the time that can be really bad. People say that can be bad because mm -hmm. once you bring your emotions into a fight, you know, if you're fighting, you know, an arch enemy, it could be bad, it could be good, whatever. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I don't think it's like bad emotion. I think it's just very compassionate. She gets in there and she fights with a lot of passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, but she's so athletic and dynamic. I mean, you saw her go for a flying triangle mm -hmm. and then she went for a Kimura and she yeah. went for this and that. And she ended up winning via Kimura, which. Of course, we've seen it before in, in UFC and in MMA, but not that often. It was really sudden. The match itself was very competitive. Whew. JoJo was uh, uh, was in there and uh, you know was was taking the fight to Rose uh, when they clinched up. Um, I believe uh, see JoJo got a takedown, but Rose would would stay super active from the bottom. She threatened with an arm bar, then went to a triangle, mm -hmm. uh, got up to the feet, and uh, let's see. Rose, uh, Rose was climbing. Uh, she got uh, uh, clinched up with JoJo, and uh, and you know was was firing punches. And and JoJo stuff. threw some elbows from the clinch. The first mm -hmm. round was all Rose. Yeah, hundred percent Rose. She came out. She threw a kick. It landed, and from that point on, it was pure pure and dominance. I it's think a part of it had to do with JoJo. She even said it in during uh, you know before the fight. She was mm -hmm. like, "The only fight I've seen of hers was the fight, her last fight." Mm -hmm. And so I'm not really familiar with her, whatever. I'm just going to do what I do. I think that kind of worked against her because she almost sounded like she had n no idea what to expect. That's not true, and though. And you can see it in the fight. That's not true. She said in the locker room that she knows that Rose starts fast and that she was going to make it a point to also start but she fast. she did that just off somebody's word. She said that she's never seen They've her fight. They've also been living together for six weeks. Right, but yeah. she... But, like, but it's, but it's also another something. thing to watch someone it's like, fights. That's true. But it's like Ronda Rousey. You know Ronda Rousey starts off fast. You know if you fight her, like we were talking about Katz and Ghana, you, you're going to start off fast. Watching fights is one part of, of the bigger puzzle. Yeah. And, and hell, they didn't and have TV it, at may, that may, point. Maybe it hurt there. her. Uh, <coughs> maybe it did. To watch it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good but, point. But, uh, you know, in the, in the second round, JoJo came out with kicks. I saw a lot more kicks and clinching and knees. I, I liked JoJo striking in the second round much more than the first round. Um, yeah, she definitely uh, was holding Rose, her own. Uh, yeah, Rose with a single leg uh, takedown attempt, but uh, uh, JoJo got top position. 
uh, and was doing all right there. I mean, she was she was fine, but Rose snuck in that Kimura and boy, that thing uh, it was over. So, yeah, 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 yeah. She she lifted her arm, uh, JoJo's arm, pretty high. Must have been a pretty uncomfortable position because Ro- uh, JoJo tapped pretty fast. Yeah, and JoJo JoJo's not the type to tap. Yeah. She she is she's a girl that she was, she's never had to. She's it eight, sounded no. like yeah. She it was sounded undis- like after the fight, she was more upset. Not that she lost, because that's part of the game. Yeah. More upset at the fact that she tapped. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, she's like you guys said. She's eight. No, she was undefeated before this. Mm-hmm. And, and she still ain't no. If you really think about it. Yeah, technically she's still <laughs> undefeated because this yeah. doesn't count on her mm-hmm. official professional record. Yeah. But um, but yeah, she I mean she got defeated fair and square. There were so many opportunities for Rose to finish her, and she had so many so many good looks. Uh, something about Rose fighting opposed to all the other girls is that she is so so visionary. She's like a visionary in there. Mm-hmm. She goes in there and she sees things that us watching wouldn't even normally see. Mm-hmm. You know, she'll jump for the flying triangle for the flying arm bar. Just the way she moves yeah. in there is brilliant and. JoJo Calderwood is one of the top strikers in this division, in this weight mm-hmm. class, in the world, okay? Yeah. And JoJo was bobbing and weaving. Her footwork was beautiful, ducking under the punches and not getting hit. Mm-hmm. That's a lot to say there. There's a lot to say about that, and I think that if she makes it to the final, she's going to win the whole it thing. It tells you a lot about Rose when she's willing to make those kind of risks and not... It didn't falter. Exactly. Like she, like a lot of people who do make those kind of risks, it's like they make it, but then they like they end up they, getting they, caught. Yeah, they end up getting caught yeah. or lose positioning. But Rose, it's like she's able to bounce back. So she's quickly. daring. She's daring in rem- the fight. It does kind of remind me a lot of uh, Anthony Pettis, in some yeah. ways. That kind of like he does a lot of those kind of similar strikings and is able to bounce back even if he doesn't catch him. You know. Right. I wonder if this they one gets uh, gets a nod for match of the of the season. I, I like so. I said, it's my favorite so far. We still have a couple more great ones coming up that I'm really yep. excited to see. But it's my favorite thus far. Um, we'll see two semifinal matches deciding who will be the finalist uh, for the season. We're going to see Carlos Barza, Jessica Penne, Rose Namajunas, and Randa Marcos. What do you think about that matchup, Rose and Randa? I think Rose is going to mop the floor with her. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Rose obviously looked really good here and, and came out presumably, uh, you know, Healthy and, and unscathed. Um, Randa presumably also was, uh, you know, uh, is, is not going on with uh, too many dings or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I, I, I want to go back and watch Randa's matches again uh, and, and get to know her. I feel like we've uh, we've been covering so many matches yeah, this fall it is between a lot this of... and the UFC. Um, you know, for for the moment, I feel like I'm kind of blanking really on her uh, her, her style or her uh, uh, her trademark moves. She has good stuff. wrestling. I mean, yeah, she, she has yeah, great it wrestling. Comes to mind. Um, um, you know, there, there's your wrestler versus striker uh, in, in the opposite direction. Well, that's like, I think that's the point you were trying to make is that it's not as high level wrestler versus, you know, a high level striker. I think it's going to be, for example, given this fight, I think it's going to be a lot more impressive. Let's say you have Carla and Tisha, did that fight play out uh, like Rose or Randa might? Uh, I think it's going to be more impressive if Randa is able to incorporate that kind of takedown mentality and takedown. Uh, offense, it's going to be a lot more impressive because she's ranked so low and Rose is thought so highly of. The expectations are lower. Pretty much. Right. Yeah, Yeah, I get what you're saying. I agree. Um, I think Rose is way too fast, way too good for Randa. Um, I don't think Randa will have the opportunity to get Rose to the ground because unlike Tisha, I think Rose is going to come out striking off the bat. I think if Rose gets to the ground, it's because she let Randa, take her to the ground, and then you're going to watch just Rose just have her way with her. Yeah, her submission game is on point, and I don't think she's good on her back. We watched her win on her back. One of my favorite things to watch is when you see somebody get taken down, and you you, you can't see it as it happens. you got to watch it again in slow motion, but as, as somebody's getting taken down, they're doing something. They're wrapping their legs around their arm or their head. Right. They're just. I called it a flying triangle. It might not have been your stereotypical flying triangle, but what it was is that Rose was in the process of getting taken down, and rather than fight it, she went with it and immediately transitioned in the air to the triangle. So, like that's you're why, saying, that's why I like Joe Lozon so much because he does that a lot. Does he? Just being able to get taken down, but not just get taken down. Like, oh, I'm taken down. I'm on my back. It's right. On the way down, still being able to get some kind of positioning, mm-hmm. and I love that. I love that's one of my favorite things to watch. It is like tenth planet jujitsu. I'm sorry, you'd like tenth planet jujitsu, George. That's a lot of tenth planet roll, jujitsu. It's right yeah. there in Van Nuys, California. There is one. In fact, there is. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Alder Hample, Gabe, Gene, and all the team there. 
Uh -huh. Very cool. We yeah. got to get you in some 10th Planet. But uh, but in the meantime, now that we have two fights next week, I think it's time for... Oh, wow. <laughs> and now, your After Buzz TV predictions. What do you think about next week, Jay, Tan? I pass. Okay. Why are you passing? I don't know. I just feel like okay. passing. Go ahead, George. What about you, Daria? <laughs> I'm the one that cued it. I have to this go This is last. like easy, smeezy, lemon peasy. Um, uh, Carlos Barza, obviously, she's going to defeat Jessica Penne. Um, if How is she going to defeat her? That's gonna, the question. The same thing. She's going to grind her to the ground. Hmm. I don't think it's going to be... Uh, I don't think it's going to be a victory by submission or TKO or anything like that. I think it's going to go the distance. Two rounds. Two rounds. Three. No, what? two. It'll be done by two. She'll grind her. She'll do the same thing she did Tisha, but much easier. Because mm. uh, someone mentioned a great point. It's really hard to take down someone that's your same size. You know, two girls that are 5'2, five, 5'3, five, grinding each other out is a lot harder than someone who's 5'2 grinding down you know, some lanky person like me. You know what mm. I mean? Like five seven, five eight. It's 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 easier to get someone tall down. It's just I think it's science. But so I think that she's gonna have an easy time taking Jessica Penne down. Easy win after two rounds. And then Rose and Randa, I think it's gonna be a little bit more competitive, but Rose Namajunas is gonna win via TKO in the first round. TKO in the first round. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jay? I pass. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think Carla Esparza <clears throat> and Jessica Penne, they're best friends, so I think that that's going to be a work. Uh, they're both going to go to a draw. They're actually going to circle around for all rounds, not touch each other at all. <laughs> and then at the last minute, Carla is going to screw over her friend. Pow! Supergirl punch right to Jessica. Drop her. Actually, not even drop her. Probably just kind of stun her back a little bit. Boom! And then the bell rings, or the buzzer. And then because only one punch was thrown in the entire match, Carla wins. Interesting. Yeah. That will be a... There you majority. go, guys. <laughs> High class predictions from Jay Tan. A, a Willie Pep, uh, Willie Pep fight. What uh, about the other fight, Jay? Rose Namajunas and Randa Marcos is going to be a remake, uh, probably move for move of Kendall Grove and Ed Herman uh, in their their ground scrap from Ultimate Fighter season two or three. Three, I think. Three. I want to say three as well. Yeah. So that's that's what's going to happen. It's going to be nonstop ground action. And it's going to be great. Good ground action, yeah. Before, what about I, you, before I go to my prediction, I know we're wrapping up real quick, but I just have a question. Um, so let's say you're a fighter, you're fighting your best friend. Uh -huh. Do you hold anything back? Are you going to sit there and say, ah, she's my best friend? Mm -hmm. So I kind of don't really want to punch her in the face. No. no well, you... I think it's an easy one for Carla because Carla is a wrestler and she doesn't really hit anyway, or she didn't in this last match. She does. She has very good striking. I shouldn't say that. But I'm that. saying, will you do anything that you wouldn't do because she's your best friend? If you do, it's subliminal, George. You can't say that. Yeah, it's honestly, I would call it a, a weakness that you should get rid of. Yeah. Because when you're in the cage, you should be bringing but the you, best but out. But you of... can't look at everybody as the same. I mean, you should, but I mean, you can't. You, at some point... What I'm saying is it's not going to be... I mean, you be like a... some people more than, you, than no, others? No, I'm saying there are some people that you might fight a little bit differently because you got a little bit more hatred toward them. But it's not a conscience, conscious decision. Like, she's not going to consciously say, okay, I'm going to go easy on her, she's my friend. It'll Maybe it'll subliminally yeah. happen because it's her friend. She'll, oh, I can't, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's not a conscious thing. She's not going to be and like... And on top of that, you know? there's too much on the line here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, no, nah. you, be especially because you don't know if you got that mentality, there's no way to know for sure if that other person's going to have the same mentality. So you might get caught just well, you because don't you're holding want, yourself back. Yeah, but you, sh again, the more you impose your strategy and yeah. your game, the less you got to worry about theirs. And mm -hmm. frankly, just my opinion alone, when you're in the cage, you should be, uh, you should be bringing in, who, regardless of who's on yeah. the other side, yeah. especially if it's your friend. You should be bringing your best to the game. It's a respect that's factor. The yeah, sign of respect. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's disrespect. You know, when I go easy on some of my teammates in practice, or I'm like, so, perfect example. Today, I kept saying to my teammate Maria, oh my God, sorry, are you okay? She's like, stop asking me if I'm okay. <laughs> We're training. Like, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's kind of like a disrespect thing. Like, what would, you think I can't Would you ask your best? that same question if somebody was sparring with you for the first time and you've never met them before? Sparring is different than a fight, though. Sparring is different. Ask what? Like, are you okay? 
Mm-hmm. You might in yeah, sparring, but that's training. In that's a weird in way. Yeah. Like if I hit them too hard, like yeah. and we're like, you know, so we're no matter what, light sparring. Even if yeah. you just met them, like, oh, we're just they're just bringing in somebody to spar, sparring, sparring. Oh, are you okay? I've yeah. done that. But yeah, that's different that. than right. an Ultimate Fighter. Match. Oh yeah, I'm just yeah. curious because I mean, obviously in a fight, you're not going to sit there and say, oh, are you okay? Right, I yeah. got gotcha. you. Um, but going on to my predictions, I'm going to continue with whatever I said last week. Roll the clip. Okay, no clip. Um, <laughs> I said that a lot last week. Uh, that I thought that the winner of each fight tonight is going to go on to the finals, and that's going to be your ultimate fighter finale for the UFC strawweight uh, championship of the world, June twelfth. Ultimate fighter Friday, June twelfth. June twelfth. July twelfth. Dece- uh, December. What are December twelfth. <laughs> I don't know. It was hot. It was hot today. <laughs> Friday, December twelfth, in Friday, Las Vegas. December twelfth at the Palms Vegas, Casino and at Resort. At the Palms Casino Resort, uh, it's going to be Carla Sparza versus Rose Namajunas. Watch it. Be there. Fox Sports One. I want to be there. If not, uh, I'll watch it on TV. Guys, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. If you didn't get a chance, go and look online. They released all of the undercard for oh, wait, oh, oh, December twelfth. I have it. I have now to bring put out on your phone. phone okay, now I can put up the phone. <laughs> and my phone's not working. Also, uh, first this weekend we have. Uh, the rematch between Champ Johnny Hendricks versus Robbie Lawler. That's supposed to be a really good one. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, really quick. They announced Emily Kagan versus Angela Hill. Asling Daly. Ash the Bash. Ash the Bash versus Alex Chambers. Tisha Torres versus Angela Magana. Magana. Lisa Ellis versus Felice Herring. Herring. Beck Rawlings versus Heather Joe Clark. And JoJo versus Sohee Ham. Oh, no. But, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll probably see like the loser of. Uh, probably like Randa versus like Jessica Penne or something. That, I think those are going to be the losers, Perhaps. so that'll probably be the, the matchup. Um, yes, so before that, watch Johnny Hendricks versus Robbie Lawler 2. And um, Gilbert Melendez versus lightweight champ Anthony Pettis. Guys, this is what this whole season has yep. been about. And it's coming to an end this weekend, so be sure to tune in for that. But we should make note, too, that uh, we've got one more episode next Wednesday, a week yes. from today. And then... Uh, the finale we will cover on uh, on Sunday. We're going to do a double we'll, we'll shot. We'll figure it out, yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. No. Listen to this guy. No, Jake <laughs> proves a good point. We're going to be doing uh, two shows on Sunday, with the Sunday after next week's Wednesday. I'm going to bring a change we'll, of clothes. We'll cover the... Uh, no, because now they know. No, that I'm going to bring a change of clothes. Oh, right. I'm not saying... I, I know they'll know. I'm saying I'm still going to bring a change of clothes. Oh, my God. Another black hoodie. Uh, I do <laughs> we'll have two, cover. actually. One from Target and one JDS, from Rio de JDS, Junior Dos Santos versus Stipe Miocic. Actually, I, I might get mine from Reebok. <laughs> on, f- <laughs> on UFC on Fox and also be covering the Ultimate Fighter finale uh, as a separate show, both on Sunday. So uh, we have one more. Next Sunday. Yes. So next the week 12th. you will the, see us Wednesday no, 13th, and Sunday. 14th. It'll the be the 14th. 14th. Yeah. Okay, guys. One more Wednesday with us, and then we'll be back to seeing you guys on Sundays. Well, let's go, Jay. What are your, what are your, where can we find you? You cannot find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook anymore. Psych. I'm still JTan716. George? Uh, reminds me. We all got to wear Reebok from now on. But uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Oh, is that for Sunday? That's or, for we'll, Sunday. We'll talk about it on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want anybody to get in trouble, you know? Uh, Reebok. Uh <laughs> Just find me. Dario, where, 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 where are you, Mosa, darling? George <laughs> Mosa, <laughs> okay, guys, you can I'm find me at DariaB28 on all your social media. You can also find me on my Facebook page, Daria the Jersey Devil Baronado. I will be making my second MMA fight mm. soon. I will tell you details. Don't, Don't worry. That. And soon for the U of MMA as it is coming back soon. We will have dates for you guys. But next time we will see you is this Sunday on the UFC show. So tune in. Thanks, guys. Bye, Alexis. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later, buzz you later, buzz you later, buzz you later, buzz you later. Buzz you later, buzz- The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.